Are you interested in game development but feeling overwhelmed by all the jargon being thrown around? One term you've likely heard of is ECS, which stands for Entity Component System. Maybe you've come across ECS in popular game engines like Unity's Dots or Unreal 5's Mass Entity. Or perhaps you're intrigued by newer frameworks such as Bevy, which is entirely built on the Entity Component System architecture using the Rust programming language. Wherever you encounter this term, you've come to the right place to learn more. In this video, I'll dive into what the ECS is, how it works, and why it's become a popular choice in game development. Before we dive into details about how an ECS works, let's start by breaking it down into the three main components, entities, components, and systems. Boy, is that gonna get confusing. Entities are the fundamental building blocks of the ECS. They represent individual objects in the world and are composed of zero or more components. Components, on the other hand, are the individual data structures that define the specific properties of an entity, such as its position, health, or velocity. Systems are the logic that operate on top of entities and components. They perform tasks such as physics calculations, rendering graphics, or updating AI behavior. By understanding the roles that entities, components, and systems play in an ECS, we can begin to see how these parts fit together to create a powerful architecture for game development. In many ECS implementations, entities are nothing more than unique identifiers that help distinguish which components belong to the same object in the game world. This identifier can be thought of as an index into the given array of a component type. However, it's worth noting that this simplification doesn't always hold true. Some frameworks such as Bevy use different ways of storing components depending on whether they expect to be present on most or only a few entities using tables versus sparse sets, respectively. This added complexity can help reduce memory consumption in some cases. One key difference between entities and indexes is that entities are typically composed of two parts, its ID and its generation. The ID functions similar to an index, whereas the generation is used to keep the IDs contiguous after deletion and recreation of entities, while ensuring that each entity remains wholly unique. This helps prevent conflicts and ensures that components can be efficiently accessed and manipulated in the context of an ECS world. Components are similar to classes or structs in programming languages. And in fact, some ECS frameworks like Bevy use Rust structs as components. Essentially, components are collections of data that deem to be inalienable, and they can always be accessed together. This helps the CPU with caching, since it means that all the data is kept in large contiguous chunks and is often accessed together. When designing your components, it is a good rule of thumb to ask yourself if you will need just one part of the component without needing the rest. If so, it is probably a good idea to separate that data into its own component, since they are not inalienable. For example, in a physics engine, you may want to separate your velocity, position, and collider into separate components, rather than having a single physics component. This allows you to optimize behavior and avoid running unnecessary checks on entities since they do not contain the correct components. Systems are a critical part of an ECS as they define the behavior of entities in your game. At a higher level, systems are similar to functions in programming languages with some important differences. While functions can operate on any data type passed as parameters, ECS systems are more restrictive in the types of data that they can accept. In most ECS frameworks, systems can only accept accesses to components or other ECS-related data. This restriction is intentional as it allows for efficient processing of large numbers of entities. In many ways, ECS systems can be seen as a subset of functions with a more limited set of parameters. Despite these limitations, ECS systems can be an incredibly powerful tool for game development. The Bevy framework, for example, uses Rust functions as its systems, which allows for easy integration with Rust's powerful type system and macros. By designing systems carefully, you can create complex behavior and interactions between entities in your game world. For example, a system might update the position of an entity based on its current velocity and the amount of time that has passed since the last update. By implementing many smaller systems into your game, you can create some very complex and dynamic systems while keeping your code quite maintainable. Now that you have a basic understanding of the different terms in an ECS architecture, let's dive deeper into the ECS world. While it is not strictly necessary for an ECS to have an abstraction like the world, it greatly improves the usability and versatility of the ECS framework. The ECS world can be thought of as a collection of all the components, entities, and systems together. It also maintains the correctness of the ECS, ensuring things such as there can be only one entity with each ID in the world. One of the benefits of an ECS world is that it can provide other useful abstractions that can help improve the developer experience. For example, resources, which can be imagined as unique components 
that can only be on a single centralized entity. This makes it easy to manage global states such as time and score that may be used across multiple systems. Schedulers are another useful abstraction provided by ECS Worlds. They allow for different systems to run based on different states in the world, such as once per second or in a particular order, such as before the physics update or after the user input has been collected. This makes it easy to manage the order in which systems run, which can be important to ensure that certain dependencies are met. Bevy in particular has a unique selling point that all systems that don't have conflicting access to components or resources run in parallel. This is made possible with a combination of the ECS world and Rust's type system, which provides a safe and efficient way to execute system concurrently. The specific implementation of ECS world depends on the framework you are using. Some frameworks may have more advanced functionality or offer more customization options than others. Nevertheless, the ECS world remains an important concept to understand when working with ECS based game engines. I hope this video helps you get a better understanding of what an ECS is and how it applies to game development. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with anyone who might benefit from learning more about the ECS framework. If there is anything you still feel you do not understand, feel free to ask questions in the comment section. And if you're interested in learning more about the Bevy engine in particular, I do have lots of videos on my channel so don't forget to subscribe to see more content on this. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do so on my Patreon, which can be found linked in the description, and potentially have your name hidden somewhere in my videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy coding.